So, just another quick video about a new feature that's been added to the latest uh, release of Virtual D-Day 2021, which is Build 6156. And this new feature is actually an effect called Docking Echo. It's not really a standard effect like you usually use them, but we'll get back to why that is. It's actually more like the new Smooth Echo that's been added to uh, the very recently released Pioneer DJM S11 mixer. The Smooth Echo on that one. And uh, this is kind of sort of the same. You can use it in kind of sort of the same ways. So how do you get to it? Well, uh, it's not going to be there by default. So you have to go into your extensions and then under effects and search for docking. And there it is. And then if you haven't already enabled it, you have to click this button. But as you can see, I already have it on my system. So I'll just shut that down again and select the new docking echo from the list. So here it is. And it has a couple of knobs, but of course we want to know everything it can do. We're going to press the plus and undock the little window and bring it up here so we can actually see what it's all about. So here it is. So what I have here? Well, we have feedback and length and color and reverb. That's kind of sort of uh, things you would expect from a, 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 an echo effect maybe. So uh, maybe except color, uh, because that is actually low pass and high pass filter uh, in one knob. So that's what it really is. So also something yeah, that is not uncommon for echo effects to have. So what does it do? Well, the, the funny thing is that if you play a track and you turn it on, doesn't do anything because it's triggered by doing something else on your system. It's triggered by ducking, if you will. So it gets triggered if you cue or if you pause or if you tone down the volume or if you crossfade, anything like that. So let's start out now, but just the, the default settings here and then trying to turn it on like I've already done and then turn down the volume of the track on the one like this. You can bring it in. As you can see by my little mistake here, you still have to be in time for it to sound good. Just like any other kind of, of effect you have to trigger in time. Like that. But since this is actually usually triggered by your mixing, by your mixing, that's not really a problem because your mixing always have to be in time, of course. So that was the default one. One one bar, one beat, um, and 80% feedback. So that's basically how much you get of it and nothing in color. So what does color do? Well, as I said, that's the low high pass filter. So if I try to turn it up a little bit, do the same thing. So I'll set this very high so you can hear what it is. It's probably higher you normally go. And of course, turn it on again, sorry. So let's try putting the, the below here, yeah? so down there, and see what it's like when it's low pass. So just like you would expect, the, the important thing here is how you trigger it. You don't really trigger it, you simply do your mixing, you turn down the volume, and it just happens. Same thing with the crossfader. So you just get it on top of what you're already doing when mixing. That's the idea. Very cool stuff. And of course, if I put this a little bit high again, maybe a little bit high pass, and I put in some reverb, you can hear that too. Like that. And as I just showed you here, the cue, when I cue it, or if I pause it, it also triggers. So you also get it down. So if you don't want it, you need to remember to turn it off before doing anything else. That's important. So uh, what else? Well, then of course, there's the feedback. How much do you want of it? So we can put that lower, turn it down again, play the track, turn down the volume and it doesn't last nearly as long, like that. 
same thing again with the with the queue here. And then the and then of course there's the length. So we have a little bit of a crazy length here, three quarters. I haven't really figured out a, a nice way to mix that into any, into anything, but we could just listen to it. Maybe you're a little bit smarter about this than I am. Need to turn down. It's just a little crazy. So let's try uh, something simpler, maybe like maybe half a beat. Then we probably need some more feedback to be able to. It has to last a little bit longer here for to, to notice it. Stand at eighty percent. So let's try the one. Like that. And then maybe, finally, trying it with a very short length here. So I'm putting it down to a quarter of a beat and turning it on. And that can actually be a little bit fun if you uh, do it with the cue point, uh, with the cueing, uh, if you will. So you can do something like, like this. Mess it up a little bit, let me try one more time. Something like that. So that's also a very funny thing to play with um, when you when you do this and when, if you do it with, with shorter length settings. But that's basically the docking effect. So the general idea is that it doesn't do anything when you turn it on. It does everything when you do it. It's parts of your mixing, like the play, the cue, the, the the line feeder, uh, the deck here, the channel feeder, if you will, and of course the cross feeder over here. Works on all those things, and you have to remember to turn it off before doing anything if you don't want it to trigger, because it will trigger. Great new feature, I'm sure I'm gonna have lots and lots of fun with this when doing uh, real gigs. <laughs>